Let's roll on. Next up for us, 1 p.m. Eastern with the Cincinnati Bengals, 2-4, and 2-1 and one on the road at Cleveland Browns, 1-5, and 0-2 oh at home, Huntington Bank Field in Cleveland, Ohio. Beautiful weather in Cleveland this week. Beautiful weather in North America this week coming up. A cold day today, but it's going to get warmer everywhere. 65 Fahrenheit, sunny, 7 miles per hour. Let's get into the line history of Bengals Browns here. It was just uh, spoken about here with the cappers in the chat. We have the Browns right now at plus six, plus six. They open up at plus five. The look ahead, uh, you know, before games on Sunday was three and a half. And we now have the six. Let's get to the total here. This total is at 42 minus 113 to the under opened up at 43 dropped to 42 and it's juiced to the under. So we can expect a 41 and a half incoming Drewski says Bengals smash Nate dog on Cincinnati Londo on the Bengals minus six with confidence Let's get into the cash flow here for the Bengals spot. We have 80% of the tickets, 73% of the cash on the Bengals. Browns have 20 and 27. 81% of the tickets and 84% of cash on the over. And we saw it drop once again. Interesting. The Bengals passing offense, seventh in the league, 249.7 yards per game. Rushing offense, 26, 100.2. Red zone offense, 10th in the league, 64.7%. Third down offense, fifth in the league, 45.8%. No one's worrying about the Bengals offense. It's their defense. Their pass defense, 14th in the league, allowing 210 yards a game. Their rush defense, horrible. They allow 146 yards per game on the ground. Their red zone defense, 24th in the league, allowing touchdown 65% of the time. And their third down defense, 26th in the league, allowing conversions 44.7% of the time. Bengals coming off a 17-7 win at the Giants. 13 first downs in the victory. And it was more than enough. Uh, Joe Burrow was 19 to 28 for 208 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. He also ran four times for 55 yards in the touchdown, had that incredible uh, long run, longest run of his career for that opening touchdown. T. Higgins led receivers with seven catches for 77 yards. Jamar Chase caught five for 72. Chase Brown ran 10 for 53 in a touchdown. The Bengals only had one red zone attempt. It was a failed attempt. They only had one, got down there once. Bengals defense looked strong for the first time all season, allowing seven points, a welcome reprieve uh, for the defense that came in ranked 31st in the league in scoring. Uh, despite allowing 24 first downs, the Giants only had 4.2 yards per play. They held the Giants to 5 of 15 on third down and 1 of 2 in the red zone. Trey Hendrickson uh, had both the Bengals sacks and uh, Jermaine Pratt had an interception. Uh, let's get into Cleveland here. Uh, passing offense, 30th in the league, 143 passing yards a game. Rushing offense, 28th in the league, 97.2 yards per game. Now, uh, do we expect Nick Chubb to be back in the lineup this week? I do. Uh, is that fair to assume at this point? I think that we expect Nick Chubb to be the running back for the Browns and, and to help them enormously uh, in that area. They're... A red zone offense, seventh in the league, 66.7%. We knew that was sort of a fake stat. They, they're never in the red zone, and they were six for six to start the year. Their third down offense, last in the league. They get th they get conversions 19.2% of the time. Less than one of every five third downs they cash. Pass defense, 11th in the league, 196.3 yards per game. Rush defense, 21st, 137.3 yards per game. Red zone defense, 16th, 52.6%. Third down defense, 13th at 35% of the time. Uh, Birdie says Browns and Browns money line for me favorite bet of the week. Uh, he's the first person to say that because Benjamin Mills saying Bengals by three scores. Browns come in off a 2016 loss at Philadelphia. Deshaun Watson struggled again, 16 to 23 for 168 yards. Browns still haven't scored 20 points in the game all season. They got their only touchdown on a blocked field goal by Miles Garrett. Rodney McLeod Jr. picked it up, went to the house. Watson was sacked three times. He threw for 49 yards in the first half. I mean, it's just horrible. Amari Cooper led receivers for four catches for 42 yards. He's a Buffalo Bill now. Pierre Strong led the ground game with eight carries for 43 yards, but Chubb will be back, and good thing, man. Got hurt week two of the 2023 season towards left ACL, MCL, and PCL. Let's get him back on the field. Remember, it's the same knee that he hurt in, in Georgia in 2015. Like seeing him get back on the field. He returned to practice for the Browns on October 2nd. Um, so they have until October 23rd to activate him. And we all expect them to play this week. The offense only put up 244 total yards, had one failed attempt in the red zone, three of 12 on third down. The pass rush continues to struggle. One sack, two quarterback hits. I mean, if you can double up on Miles Garrett, no one else is going to hurt you. Uh, the defense, though, has been good this year, and they tried to keep the Browns in it. Held the Eagles to 5-14 on third down, 0-1 in the red zone. Uh, despite allowing the Eagles to rack up 372 total yards, the Eagles only had one 4A into the red zone. 
Now there's more problems. Nick Harris, their center, because Ethan Pochich with the knee injury. Nick Harris, a fractured tibia. He's going on the IR. So now your third stringer, Michael Dunn, comes in. Uh, this is bad news. You're already out uh, Grant Delpit and Ronnie Hickman, two safeties. Jerome, Jerome Ford suffered a hamstring injury. He's week to week, not going to be in the lineup this week. So they really need Nick Chubb in. Take it away, Troy. It's fascinating. You have a whole bunch of cappers in the chat saying that the Bengals are going to smash. And then you have Birdie saying, give me the Browns money line and the Browns on the spread. Take it away. Bengals, Browns. I mean, God, I'm, I'm confused. I shouldn't have read the chat. I shouldn't have read the chat while you were <laughs> Well, uh, damn it. God damn it, chat. Why you guys got to do this to me sometimes? And uh, – I was heavy on the Bengals last week. The market was bullish. Burrow back against the wall, must win spot. I think we do have another backs against the wall type of game here. It's a must win spot for one team, not for the other team. The issue for me with the Bengals is you look at what Burrow was able to do or what he's done historically in Cleveland. He's 0-3, losing by on average by 15 points. Two of them were 20-point blowouts. You know, Cleveland offensive line is starting to get more healthy. Nick Chubb could be coming back. The defense is still graying out. It's top five in the NFL currently. And Deshaun Watson, yeah, he's terrible. Um, but he hasn't thrown a pick in two weeks. So I think that's a huge improvement from him. And, he, he I mean, he's, he's up against a vulnerable defense, obviously, what we've seen from the Bengals. I mean, one week is not enough to say that this Bengals team is turning over the, you know, turning the page on what they've showed for the first four weeks. And if Cleveland can find success in the run game, there's a path to victory for this team, clearly. Um, I mean, they're one in five right now with a with a really tough schedule. I mean, this is this is one where I, I, I really believe if it wasn't for the news on Amari Cooper, I wouldn't have moved on it. But as soon as I heard that news come through, I moved on a teaser with the Bengals involved. And if you look at the history of this market, it's funny because I was getting so bullish on the Browns. I was getting I have most of my notes here, I don't want to even go into them because I'm not betting the Browns anymore. This is a one-way action for me. I want nothing to do with the Browns. I think the writing's on the wall of what, what that trade means for this organization right now. And if you look at the history, I mean, people say you want to back home dogs, especially in division. Well, that might be true if you look at it from a thousand-foot view. But there's different price ranges where things completely different. And in this price range between six and seven, divisional home dogs, line moving away from them, do not win games. They do not cover games. They don't even come close in football games. I'm expecting this to be double digits, but it, I, I I might have to move on the spread. Um, I did move on the teaser. I paired it with the Lions. I'm very confident the Lions keep that game close, and I think the Bengals win this game. So right now, just put me with the teaser, Jim, minus 120. I got the Bengals minus a half and the, um, and the Lions plus eight and a half. Yeah. I'm going to have to sit with all this. I, I want to. They're all really excited about having Chubb on the field. I mean, is it possible that Amari was just sulking? Didn't want to be with this club <laughs> and getting him off and out of the room is a positive. Is Are we absolutely positive? certain this that Chubb's going to be in the game? Uh, well, was that a hard five juicing towards the Browns. Boom. He gets traded at six and a half. Oh, only if there's a setback of practice this week, he's set to play. I mean, uh, I wanted to bet him. Like, I was this close because I thought the same thing. But this line movement, it's just no way. No way. Through the six. No way. And um, Birdie with the final point says, love the Browns here. What a better way to alleviate negative noise than to beat a team you've beaten at home for the last seven years. Absolutely wild. I'm going to need more time on this. Uh, I don't think it's a Bengal slam dunk spot by any means. Uh, I just don't. I just, the, no way. there was a lot of issues, you know. I mean, if you looked at that game against the Giants, their, their third down defense, that's 26th in the league. I mean, you let the Giants get 24 first downs on you. I mean, I just, uh, and then, and then when push came to shove, Daniel Jones had to make a pass on fourth down, made the completely wrong read, which we could 
100% expect out of Deshaun Watson, who's going to be the starting quarterback for the Browns this week. The read, the difference in that game was Burrow versus Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones missed multiple reads, and I and I felt the same way. And then I was like, "Oh, I got lucky. I was all excited." And then, then you you go back and you watch the plays that happened in that game. I mean, it was there was a clear read. You had to throw a five yard out route to to basically give your team a chance to win the game. He threw it. He didn't even like. He just misread. It was a complete misread. It was a simple read for a good quarterback. How could we expect anything different here? No, I. Deshaun Watson is a huge problem. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. You know how bullish I was on this damn Browns team. Oh, yeah. And you made cash off him a lot last year. I did. I did. I'm 0 for 2 back in him this year. And and, and after he, what he's putting on film this year is way worse than what he was putting on film last year. Agreed. It's way worse. And we thought that it was going to improve once he got comfortable, uh, yeah. you know, which was uh, wrong. We roll on. 